Uh, last session we stopped here with BART, and this was a combination of BERT type of an architecture and a GPT type of an architecture. You had the masking mechanism, and at the same time, you had the objective of next subword prediction task. So the objective function is coming from GPT, the denoising mechanism is coming from BERT. You are using both the encoder and decoder part of uh, a transformer. Now that we are using transformers, we saw three methods of making them more efficient when we were doing translation. Uh, here is the fourth one. It's about long former. Uh, we know that attention mechanism has a time and memory complexity of order n squared. And we want to reduce that as much as possible and perhaps make it linear. And here n is the sequence length. The longer is your sequence, the higher is going to be the cost of computing the attention, the attention matrix, and then multiplying it and storing it. This is a schematic view of the full attention. So every query is going to pay attention to every single key on the input. So everybody is paying attention to everybody else. And that's going to give you the order n squared in terms of time and memory complexity. We also know about uh, convolutions, and we know that convolutions look at the short window around each word or around each pixel. Can we do a similar thing here? Can we combine a local windowed attention with a task-motivated global attention? And I'm going to tell you why you need a task-motivated global attention in general. But for now, let's borrow ideas from CNNs with local windowed attention. Rather than each query paying attention to every key in the input, it could focus around a neighborhood. And this is very similar to what a convolution is going to do. You have a fixed size window that you're going to spread an attention budget of one within that window. And that window is a sliding because as soon as you change your query to some other query here, the window is going to slide to encompass that query. W is the fixed size. For instance, you can say that you're paying attention to one half of the tokens on the left side and one half of the tokens on the right side, in addition to yourself. And this way, one of these ends, you're going to reduce by W. And then we learned also about dilated convolution. You can borrow ideas from dilation and then uh, pay attention every other, pay attention to every other key. So skip by one while you are paying attention. And this way you're increasing uh, the field of view of the attention mechanism. And that way you are gonna be able to uh, process longer sentences, at the same time, look far into the past or into the future. This is a dilation rate. For instance, dilation rate here is two. Dilation rate in the original sliding window is gonna be one. And that's a hyperparameter that you can play around with. And the question is, what dilation should you use? The answer is use multiple of them. Maybe for each head in your attention mechanism, because we know that we have multi-headed attention, for each head, choose a different dilation factor or dilation rate. Maybe one, two, four, etc. And there is also this idea of global attention and it's task specific or task motivated. This is going to depend on the downstream task. For pre-training, you're going to be using dilated, slided window attention mechanism. When it comes to your downstream task and fine tuning, you need this global attention. What is that? First of all, it's going to be task specific. We know that some of the tasks, the downstream tasks that we want to solve, actually a major class of them, are going to belong to a classification uh, type of task like sentiment analysis. We know that we are going to add a CLS token at the beginning of the sequence. So we are going to have that CLS. And that CLS is going to give us queries at multiple hidden layers. For each one of those queries, you say that I'm going to pay attention to everybody. I'm going to pay attention to the entire sequence. So this would be your CLS token, which is paying attention to the entire sentence. And because it is only one token doing so, the cost is still going to be in the order of n. 
that's not going to change. Some of your tasks are in the form of question answering. And over there, you usually concatenate your question with the document. And here you're going to have global attention for all of the tokens inside your question. So any token that you choose from your question, it needs to pay attention not only to the question itself, but also to every single token in the document. But again, because this is a limited number of tokens, you are not increasing the cost too much and it is still acceptable. So is this idea clear? So you need to have a combination of global and a sliding window depending on the downstream task. Okay, perfect. But mathematically speaking, what are you doing? The changes that you're gonna be doing are minimal. You still have your query key value. You still have query getting multiplied by the key. You have the softmax, but now you have these QSs that are a sliding window attention. And then some of your queries are gonna end up being global. And that's how you're actually gonna implement this. For instance, if you pick a query, your values, your key and values are gonna come from a couple of tokens to the left and to the right. So this K is gonna have a smaller size, okay? Now you can actually do language modeling with it. This text eight and English Wikipedia eight are good benchmarks uh, to a study large N for large sequence length. And your task could be next word prediction task, which is basically your language modeling. On two different data sets, long former is going to give you the smallest bits per character, which is basically the perplexity or the log of log two of your perplexity. That's what you're reporting here. What else? Uh, that was for pre training, and you were looking at the validation data on text eight and English week eight. And then you are reporting the perplexity of a language model. You can go to your downstream tasks and report some results on the fine tuning portion of the transfer learning approach. Some of the tasks are going to be question answering, like Wikihub, Trivia QA, Hotbot QA. These are good data sets to explore. Some of them are co reference resolution, some of them are document classification, like sentiment analysis. And then you have different metrics for each one of them. For some of these data sets, they are going to be classification. But if you have a classification task where your data is unbalanced, you have more data in one bucket in one class compared to another class, then accuracy is no longer a good metric. And you can use an average of recall and precision metric, which is going to give you a fun score. Any questions about log former? Was everything clear? Okay, cool.